and I come up to you and you take a picture and I say, my man, my man. And he's like, I don't know you. Yeah, well, I know you don't. I don't work for you. You're directly affecting me, and I appreciate that, and I just want to say thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, I just want to start off by saying thank you for all the work that you do. Um, when I tell my aunts that I was here in this type of setting that one of your events, they just go go crazy. Um, I want to thank all the panelists, for, you know, and my heart go out to you for what you had to go through and endure. Um, Attorney uh, Swan, I thank you because I was here last year and you graciously took down the information and listened to me about my aunt, Debbie Ramos, and we filed uh, the paperwork, I say paperwork, but your office came back and said that unfortunately, it came down to a piece of article of uh, a blood stain in her case, where the government had tested it, and it was so small of a stain that once they tested it, it couldn't be tested anymore. So she's been locked up for 33 years, um, uh, and it came down to this art, this blood stain that right now cannot no longer be tested. So my question is, I know you said when your office can't do anything, there's other offices that we can try to uh, get some type of uh, understanding. What's your name, man? Oh, my, oh I'm sorry. My name is Ozzy O'Hewitt, and um, I have an organization called Legit Money Group, and it's an organization that helps young people, young disadvantaged people learn financial literacy. Um, I go into the detention centers for the juveniles and kind of just talk to them about the decision making and the power that they have in basically uh, going back and doing the introspection um, and understanding past, present, and future. And how they would, would you have been incarcerated? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've been incarcerated. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Well, tell them, how, tell them about you. <laughs> I was incarcerated, but I did what they said I did. So, <laughs> I did what they said I did. So, 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 I did what they said I did. You know, be in the street hustling and so on and so forth, and and to just arm the our youth with the information that that same tenacity, same energy, same ambition that you brought out there doing something wrong, you can use that and challenge it some right and still get the same type of. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm here. I'm basically here for my aunt because I love her, and it's well, like it's wonderful her. to see oh, you again. Thank you. Um, <laughs> This is the most heartbreaking of situations, and it happens far too many times, that we will get letters from people, and we get all of the records, and we do all of the investigation, and we think that it looks like a person is probably innocent, and then we just need to get the evidence. And what we often find too many times, right, is that the police destroy the evidence, right, that the evidence wasn't maintained in a way that is appropriate, so it's too degraded to be tested, or, you know, this is a third circumstance where um, it was all used up, right? The protocol to preserve 50%, there's generally a protocol to preserve 50% of any given sample so that you don't wind up in this situation. That protocol wasn't followed. So this is a circumstance we encounter a lot and it's one of the most heartbreaking. What I would say to you is, first and foremost, this isn't, the, this isn't gonna bring you a lot of comfort, this one, but the science is really evolving every single day. It really is. Right, we are able to test and exonerate people on samples that we couldn't, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago. Mm. Right, so just know that, right? Just on the, on the question of that sample and the question of what can or cannot be done with that piece of evidence, what's happening today is gonna be different from what, what can we do tomorrow. So it's not over, right? That the science is evolving every day. The second question, of course, is whether she can be exonerated on a basis other right, than DNA testing, right? People are convicted on the basis of false confessions, on the basis of 
of misidentification. It just is, the next question would become in your case, is there enough other evidence, right, aside from the biological evidence, that we can make a case to establish the police lied, they coerced a confession, right? You could create a, you know, establish that the other evidence is, is questionable enough, right, to raise a challenge to it. Okay, next question. You know what, uh, she's coming up to the microphone.